Another rather special type of method that you can put in a Scala class is a property assignment method. Now, the real impact of this in, on the language and how you program things is a little bit deep and I don't expect that you will understand it at this point in time. Maybe after you've learned a few languages, for example, after you've learned Java and you can compare it to Scala, the real impact that this has is uh, might stand out and it's because in, in Java, for example, all the methods that you write have to have parentheses. Uh, there are some limitations to that and what we're about to talk about is actually part of the reason why Scala does not uh, require that you put parentheses on methods that don't take any arguments. And this is for the creation of assignment operators that assign to properties of a class. So we don't have any of those in our immutable vector because it is, well, it's immutable. So we're not supposed to be able to do assignment to change the fields X and Y. But over here we can. In fact, we have methods called set X and set Y but when you call these, you know, that's the syntax. That's not what people are used to, to typing in mathematically. Or, you know, it would be nice to be able to do that. Okay, we'd like to be able to just say that vectors x equals 10. Well, we could have if we had made these public bars and then everyone could see them. Uh, but I don't want to make them public bars and we'll we'll look at a, a, another example in just a second to see exactly why that is. Instead what we can do is we can write a method in our class and so I'm going to change set x to x underscore equals and I'm going to change set y to y underscore equals. The rest of the function here the method stays the same because it's just making an assignment to those uh, values, but now you see this compiles. So if you define methods that have a name, underscore, and an equals, you can then, using the dot notation, basically what you're doing is you're leaving out the underscore and the parentheses, and it works. Uh, I should note that I don't have to have the space there. It's still happy. So this is just kind of a shortcut. These are special methods. Scala compiles these differently so that you can effectively get assignment into things that are private. Now, in this case, there really was no point in making X and Y private. We're giving the programmer full ability to, to set them. But we have done an example where it might have been nice to have an ability like this, and we really didn't want to have the full ability for setting things, and that was the balance on our account. Okay. And there are multiple reasons why you shouldn't be able to just set the balance. For, for one thing, you might set it to an invalid value. You're not allowed to set your balance to be negative. Uh, for another thing, there is the fact that there needs to be the, the logging, the audit records or whatnot, whenever there's money transactions. And we've already written methods for deposit and withdraw. But it would still be able to, ni nice to, it would be nice to have, let's go ahead and let's put just a companion object in here so that we can write a main. Okay, so I can make a new account which would need a customer, new customer who would need an address. <laughs> this is actually not that simple. Mark Lewis new address nil and our account also needs an ID apparently I'm missing something constructor for customer oh our customer also needed an ID right in here since we don't care really what it is, I'm just calling our IDs ID. Okay, so now I have an account. It would be really nice to have in the code someplace a line like that that would only work as long as this was a valid balance. And we just saw that, well, I could add in here. I can do def balance underscore equals and then new balance, which is an int. 
And our first cut at this would just be to say underscore balance equals new balance. We know we don't want to do that though. And the reason we don't want to do that is because then I could you know, do that and that should not be allowed. We should not be able to have a negative balance like that. So what can we do instead? Well, when we are changing the balance, what should really happen is changing the balance should be either a call to a deposit or withdraw. That's how we should change balances. Basically all changes to the balance should either be a deposit or a withdraw. So what we can do inside of here is we can check if the new balance is less than underscore balance, well, that means we are taking money out and this is a withdraw. So we're going to withdraw the amount of balance minus new balance. Else, if it's not a withdraw, it's a deposit. So then we will do deposit and in this case we will want the amount to be the new balance minus our existing balance. Now this code still works. This code is still going to set it to 700. In this case we had started off with a balance of 0. The 700 is larger than the 0 so it's going to come to the second case and it's going to basically deposit $700. That's wonderful. Okay, that allows us to do this. Another really interesting thing that this is going to allow us to do, a dot balance plus equals 40. That actually compiles. I didn't write a plus equals. And this is one of the interesting things about how Scala sees assignment operators. When it sees something like a plus equals, the first thing that it tries to do is check if there is a method called plus equals. In this case, there's not. So if it doesn't find a method called plus equals, it tries to convert it to the longer form. Well, now this compiles though. This is perfectly happy. This is using our balance method from right here to get the balance. It adds 40 to that balance, and then it uses the assignment operator that we just wrote right there to store this value back into the balance. And because that balance is larger than the current balance, this will wind up doing a deposit. So inside of the code, you can write something like that. You can use a plus equals or a minus equals, and you will wind up getting a deposit or a withdraw. Okay. So this is a very powerful feature that Scala has put in there so that you can write expressions that look like this, but they're actually working with private data and they're only doing things that are safe so that you can keep the data inside of a class safe from outside meddling, but still make the syntax of working with it look the way that programmers are used to seeing things happening with, for example, assignments.